Welcome to tutorial 6, Defining Operational Variables in GPSX. It is suggested to complete tutorials 1 and 2 prior to getting started with this tutorial video, so you can gain an understanding of how to create plant models and run simulations in GPSX. How some operational characteristics in a wastewater plant are defined may be site-specific and difficult to generalize. GPSX has a defined feature that allows the user to format the calculation for operational variables such as the food to microorganism ratio and the soil's retention time. The goal of this tutorial video is to show users how to define a custom calculation for specific operational variables. First step is to open a new file and save it under an appropriate name. Turn on the grid lines under View Display Grid. Ensure that you are using the Mantis 2 library option. We will now create a plant layout. Looking to the process model objects, within the influent group, drag a wastewater influent object to the drawing board. In the flow combiners and splitters group, drag a control splitter in a two flow combiner. Add a plug flow tank from the suspended growth processes group as well as a rectangular secondary clarifier from the secondary clarifier process group. Use the model defaults for these objects. Arrange the model objects in the same manner as in this tutorial video, and create the appropriate connections. Connect the influent with the control splitter. From the control splitter, join the overflow with the final effluent combiner, and the pump flow to the influent of the aeration tank. Join the aeration tank with the secondary clarifier through the MLSS stream and create a connection between the final clarifier effluent and the two flow combiner. Lastly, create a recycle by joining the clarifier underflow to the aeration tank recycle input. Now let's label the objects. Turn on the labels button on the toolbar. Label the influent object as raw influent and the influent stream raw. For the control splitter, label the overflow bypass and the pump flow WWINF. The control splitter is going to be used to simulate a bypass weir. In the plug flow object, label the object aeration, the overflow MLSS, and the pump flow PMP. The secondary clarifier object can be labeled final clarifier, the overflow FE, pump flow WAS, and the underflow RAS. In the two flow combiner, label the output final F. We will now make alterations to the clarifier underflow properties. Right click on the clarifier and go to input parameters, operational. Within the underflow section, turn on the proportional recycle and change the stream label to which recycle is proportional from blank to WWINF. This means that the underflow rate is now going to be proportional to the influent to the aeration tank. We will keep the recycle fraction to 0.8 as it is acceptable for this example. Now within the pump flow section, change the pump flow value from 40 to 100 meter cube per day. This pump flow value represents the wastage rate from the clarifier, except the form. We will now define the mass flow of the effluent solids. This is simply the effluent suspended solids multiplied by the effluent flow rate. From the Define Wizards menu, select Mass Flow from the available options. In the Stream Choice panel, select Bypass, FE, and Final F. The only variable of interest is the total suspended solids. Select this from the variable choice menu under the composite variables heading. Accept this form and save your model layout. Switch into simulation mode. Select the new graph tab. We will now construct the new graph, which will consist of three mass flows. Right-click on the Clarifier FE connection point and select Output Variables, Define Variables, Mass Flow. 
Drag the mass flow total suspend solids variable to the blank area of the new output graph tab. Repeat for the bypass and final F streams so that all three mass flows are being displayed on the same graph. Click on the Graph Properties button to modify the graph's properties. Label the graph mass flows and set the max values on the axis to 1000 kg per day. Make sure to change the units from the default of grams per day to kilograms per day. Auto arrange the graph. Let's create an input controller for the influent flow. Right click on the influent object and go to flow, flow data, and drag the influent flow object to the input controllers area. The default maximum value of 10,000 meter cube per day is appropriate. Run a 20 day simulation. During the run, adjust the input slider to increase the flow into the plant. You will notice that it flows above 2,000 meter cube per day, which is the default flow rate for the control splitter. Some flow will start to appear in the bypass stream. To study the effect of changing the bypass flow limit, make an input control for this parameter. Do this by right-clicking on the control splitter and going to input parameters pump flow and dragging the pump flow into the input control section. Rerun the simulation making adjustments to the bypass rate and influent flow rate. Save the model layout. We will now explore the solids retention time or SRT. Switch into modeling mode and access the SRT manager from the defined menu. Within this window click on the green plus button and enter in a name for the SRT variable. Note that SRT will be automatically appended to the end of the name. Accept this form. You will notice that an equation appears. Move the SRT window off to the side of the drawing board so you can see the entire model layout. The numerator represents the mass of solids held in each tank. To add to the numerator, simply click on the process object to add the mass of solids in the unit process to the SRT numerator. For this tutorial, we will add both the solids from the aeration tank and the clarifier. Click on both of these unit objects to add them to the numerator. The aeration tank is divided into four reactors by default. Ensure that all of the reactors are included in the SRT calculation. The denominator of the equation represents the mass flow of solids leaving the system. To add to the denominator, click on the flow lines that represent the solids out of the system. Click on the WAS line as well as the FE line. Ensure that your equation is identical to the one presented in this video. We will now remove the mass of solids in the clarifier to demonstrate the ease at which adjustments to this formula can be made. Simply click on the clarifier to remove it from the equation. Close the SRT manager window and save the layout. Switch into simulation mode. From the Define menu, open the SRT Manager. Drag the variable label and create a new graph on a new tab. Open the Graph Properties window, relabeling the graph to SRT and adjusting the max axis to 30 days. We will now add a controller for the WAS pump flow to explore the effect that the wastage rate has on the SRT. Right click on the secondary clarifier and go to input parameters operational and drag the WAS pump flow to create a new input controller. Run a 20 day steady state simulation making adjustments to the WAS pump flow and viewing the effect on the SRT.
Switch back into modeling mode and open the daily average wizard from the define menu. Change the variable type to define variables from the drop down menu. Select only the mass flow total suspended solids item from under the two flow combiner final F mass flow submenu. Accept this form and save the model layout. From the define menu, select the moving average. Again, change the variable type to define and select only the mass flow total suspend solds item from under the two flow combiner final F mass flow submenu. Switch into simulation mode. Right click on the combiner's final F connection point and select output variables, define variables, daily average, and drag the variable to the right of an existing tab to create the graph. Do the same with the moving average variable and add it to the same graph. Open the graph's properties and change the graph name to daily and moving average flows, setting a maximum value of 1000 kg per day for both variables. Auto arrange the graph. Run a 20 day simulation adjusting the influent flow rate to observe the effect on the daily and moving averages. When defining an SRT, you have the option of creating a process controller to maintain an SRT setpoint. Switch into modeling mode and open the solids retention time manager from the define menu. Select the SRT variable that you previously defined and click on the estimate was using the set SRT box. We will just keep the controller selections as their defaults. Close this window and save the model layout. Switch into simulation mode. Open the SRT Manager window from the Define menu and drag the SRT setpoints to the Input Control section to create a slider for this variable. At this time, also drag the Estimate WAS using Set SRT to the Input Controls tab. This creates an on-off switch for the process controller, removing the need to open the SRT Manager in modeling mode if you want to turn the controller on or off. Open the controls properties and change the maximum value to 30 days for the SRT setpoint. In the same tab as the SRT graph, we will add a graph for the WAS pump flow. Select the graph tab containing the SRT graph and make the graph slightly smaller to open up some blank space. Click on the WAS stream connection point and select flow from the output variables menu. Drag the WAS flow variable to the blank space in this output graph tab. Open the graph properties window and change the graph name to WAS flow and the maximum value to 500 meter cube per day. Auto arrange the graphs. Run a 20 day simulation adjusting the SRT setpoint to observe the change in the WAS flow rate to achieve the desired SRT. Save your layout. You have now completed tutorial 6 and should be familiar with how to define specific operational variables in GPSX.